Hi YouTube, it's AC Dodd here again and join me back in the workshop where we're going to offset bore a 1275 block to 73.5 mil. Okay, so I've got a uh, customer sent me a block in. Um, he wants this board out to make it 1380, so uh, we've got to take the block. Um, we've obviously got to uh, do a few checks. And then we've got to offset bore it to 73.5 mil uh, to suit pistons which the customer supplied. Um, so the reason for this video is basically to show you how I do it. Now again, as I always say with the videos, um, you know, the way I do it isn't necessarily the same as the way other people do it. And my way is not better than anybody else's. It's just the way I do it. So, um, you know, with that in mind... Uh, hopefully you'll find this uh, useful, so uh, let's get into it. Okay, so starting off with, let's look at the pistons. Um, customers sent me some uh, neural 73.5s, which are effectively the old Powermax 73.5s. So the first thing we need to do uh, in order to bore our block is we need to work out what size the actual bores need to be. So uh, I always get the pistons, have a measure up and then we'll know what size to finish the balls to. So first up, let's get into the pistons. Pistons are unpacked. As we can see, these are a nice quality piston. They come with uh, uh, the usual chrome rings. Um, they have got the later one-piece type oil ring, which I'm not a big fan of, but um, they have got the later one-piece type oil ring, which I'm not a big fan of, but uh, they seem to work perfectly well. Um, so, yeah, I can't really moan about them, but that's just the uh, uh, changing in production and uh, saving costs as, as time goes on. Um, but these pistons uh, feature drilled oil return slots, so they're, they're quite strong. Uh, been, you know, be, this particular design has been around for years, so they, they work very well. Anyway, in this particular application, which is going to be uh, a road-based uh, 1380 engine, uh, these pistons are uh, ideal. Um, so we will be using these in conjunction with my RS uh, Plus camshaft. Uh, so it will be uh, a little bit of a lopy idle, but uh, we'll, we'll really get going once you uh, get your foot down. Um, from about 2,500 revs, this will pull hard all the way to the red line. So... Uh, obviously dependent on the spec of the engine, but um, I'm assuming that this engine will go together with a modified head. Anyway, uh, what we now need to do is uh, these pistons have been um, sat around at about 12 degrees uh, Celsius. Uh, the reason for it is if they're too cold, then obviously um, they will shrink because they're aluminium. So if I handle them too long, then they warm up so we need to measure these reasonably quickly um, so I will go through and uh, use my micrometer in this case you need a two to three inch and we'll take some measurements so the first thing we need to do is take our micrometer and take some measurements and in terms of where to measure on these pistons you're looking at around this position so, about there, you can measure it in a number of positions, which I have done just to make sure, but we are getting a good consistent reading there. And uh, this particular one measures 2.8905. Okay, so on to the last one now. And this one measures 2.891. So one of the things I do once I've uh, measured them, get the box, and I just write on the box the size. So that I've got that for future when I'm honing the block. And then... If you look across there, you'll see these pistons are pretty good. We've got 8905, 8905, 8904. There's only a tenth out. And then this one is nine, um, nine tenths. 
sorry, um, is the biggest one, 891. So that's uh, six tenths bigger than this one and five tenths bigger than that one. Or well, those two, I should say. So yeah, that's the, exactly the reason why you need to measure them. And when we bore the block, uh, we will uh, make sure the piston clearances are sized to match these pistons. Okay, before we can do any boring, uh, one of the things I've got to do is uh, I need to gauge the block. And what I mean by that is I need to uh, check if the um, top surface is parallel with the bearing balls on both ends of the block. So uh, I use this rather Heath Robinson gauge, which I made many years ago before I had any money. And uh, I still use it now. I see no need to replace it. It works very well. But basically what I do is I set that gauge. Uh, the foot goes inside the main bearing tunnel. The uh, dial gauge goes on the top of the block. And it just gives you a comparative reading uh, from one end of the block to the other. So I've, I've uh, zeroed that on this end of the block so if we put that in now and then we move the gauge and we find and we're about we're less than a thou or about zero so what that basically means is that that block surface is parallel to the mains. And the reason why we're doing that check is my boring bar, which is a Van Norman 944, clamps to the top face of the block. And uh, if the top face of the block was out of parallel to the main bearings, then the machine would bore all the cylinders um, at an angle. So we can't have that. So if you want a nice accurate bore, you need to machine the top face of the block first, square with the mains, and then you can use that as a reference for which to sit the boring bar on and machine all the cylinders. Okay, so uh, one of the next things you want to do is uh, to take any high spots off the top of the block. So use a file for that. You just run round and make sure the top of the block is nice and flat. So if we have a look where we've just filed, you can see around all the holes, the high spots, where all the threads have been pulled. Now, if you're going to use a block mounted boring machine and you put it on this face, then it's certainly not going to sit flat. And of course, every block's different. So the first thing you need to do is to make sure that's perfectly flat. So any raised burrs, or raised or pulled threads will cause the machine not to sit flat on the block and therefore make the bores you know not parallel with the mains so it's very important to make sure that on a deck mounted machine like i use the van norman 944 that, that is nice and flat now the next job we need to do is um, i'm also going to run a sander over that as well just to flatten that off and make sure there's absolutely no high spots one other thing that often comes up is uh, the uh, a discussion around the letter that's sometimes in the top of these blocks. Now, that letter is actually the bore size grading. So it indicates uh, to the people assembling the engine at the factory what size pistons need to be fitted. So um, when you see that on a block, uh, that's a good thing because that also means the block hasn't had a lot of uh, surfacing on the top. Uh, you know, it, it, it takes about five or six thou to remove that. So you know this block uh, was on its original size uh, or was on its original facing or very close to it so there's maximum meat on this block um, which is one of the reasons why we're going to bore it out to uh, from the uh, plus 60 all the way out to 73.5 uh, which will take this combination up to 1380 cc okay so one of the first things i'm going to do to the block before we uh, set it up is just use a flat wheel and take off all the rough rubbish around the inside of the uh, cylinders and the corrosion and um, any any carbon. The reason for that is uh, the um, self-centering feet or the cat's paws on the boring machine. Uh, if they if they don't touch the the actual bore and there's crap in the way, then 
uh, it won't bore uh, centrally down the uh, cylinder. Last thing I'll do before I get the boring machine onto the block is I use my orbital sander and just uh, sand the top of the block to make sure it's nice and smooth and uh, any any final burrs are not flat. Okay, so I've put the head gasket on the block and that just gives us an idea of where we need to uh, look at the bore. So there's number four and uh, I've got it uh, reasonably centred with all the holes as you can see, all the stud holes, so we can now start to see where the bores are. Not too bad, but it will help us understand where we need to move them to when we bore the block bigger. So this block it's only got to go something just about 54 thou till we get to the size because it's already plus 60 over. But what we do need to do, that's the distance between 3 and 4, that's pretty even. But we're going to move them out from the centre because the centre is pretty close. So we need to try and maximise the thickness across the centre bores while maintaining the thickness across 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. So in this case, we're going to move one and two to the right of this picture, that way. And we're going to move three and four that way. Okay, so what I've done now, is this is just so I don't make a mistake, although these are fairly easy to do on these ones, is uh, I've marked up the block. So we've got these two cylinders are going to move out that way these two cylinders are going to move out that way and that way it maximizes the thickness between the center cylinders so we'll see that once we've bored that's it for part one join me in part two when we get the boring machine out and start cutting some metal see you soon <laughs>